Good day and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we've made some progress on the sales. Um, I actually thought I was nearing the finish when I realized that um, they're not quite. Um, so I'll, I'll touch base on that first, right? So the, um, the jib and stay sales. So this sale here and over here and in the back and these guys here right so those guys are the ones that I have not yet put on this one this one and the one that goes in my chips here um, and I have no idea what the term is for that particular sale I believe I believe all of these are called stay sales because they're on state lines. Now, I apologize, all of you nautical folk. I apologize. I have not researched nautical terms enough. Um, I'm in the process, but I believe they're called stay sales. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Now, what that means is there's a sale here, a sale here, and then there's one in here. And when I went back and I looked at my pictures of the pearl, those sales don't exist. And so there is this guy down here, which will be this lower one. But then there isn't the one that goes from here to the middle of the forward mast. There is one that goes from the end of the spread of the bow spread to the top of the foremast. Um, and that's not the same sale. At least it doesn't seem to have the same dimensions as this guy, although he, see, because he ties off here, which is the middle part of the uh, the foremast. So that sail dimension's like me; it doesn't quite fit. And then there's these two that go from the foremast to the main mast. One goes almost straight across and is tied down, sort of. It's just left hanging loose. And one goes up and then it goes up to the top, and those masts or those sails are and, and nowhere in here there's this mess that's in here that is sort of kind of that sail that we have um i have not looked at pirates of the caribbean dead man's chest or any of those those later uh movies to see if that sail does exist or how it exists because um i'm i'm well, I guess not interested. <laughs> it, it's not what I'm I'm trying to recreate. So um, that is something I'm going to end up doing is replacing. I'm, I want to do this. Right? So this is what's in this picture and what's in that image is kind of what I'm going after. So I have to remake them, right? I have this one done, but these three I do not have done. Now, I have done those um, just prior to starting this video today. I, I had to sort of rig up a little jig to get that sag, right? So you tanker guys who, who talk about um, sag in the uh, um, in your tracks, you know, these lines, these are not taut stay lines apparently because um, you see it's got that sag there and this one also has a sag to it in, in a different part of the scene. So I had to create the sails with that sag in place. So I'm going to put a picture of them currently drying, because that's what's happening, up here. All right, so that's it. I, you know, I kind of created them on a little jig. And and that's actually my um, uh, phot photographic jig for airplanes, so that I can hold up planes or spaceships against decent backgrounds and take pictures. So I was kind of fortunate that I had that thing. But, you know, any vertical sticks will work. Um, and you just tie them off, paper clip them, and it'll give you, get whatever sag you want, lay the tissue over after you've soaked it. Um, I found that the best way to do it is soak it in water first. Just soak it in water, hang it, then drop the, the PVA mixture that we have in the sale video um, on that, and then we get the, the sales. So I have those yet to do. Uh, they need to dry, they need to finish up. Then I can rig them up and the sales will be done. And I can then move on to the final detailing parts, which will be the next next phase. So 
In this series, the previous video to this one is the making of the sails. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because uh, I go into a, a near three quarters of an hour worth of, of how I did the thing. Um, there's little captions throughout that tell you little gotchas, getches, things I figured out as I went through in the process. But in essence, in the end, this is how it came out. Now this little piece right here still needs to be, I need to finish adjusting that one. Actually, this is the sail that you see me working on when in that video. So this sail is the one that I did. And it is my opinion that in any ship model, the sails are, are really the thing that gets you. So um, I'm really content with what these are. I did have to dry brush. I did have to go back and shade up and down as I, you know, so the, the, the basic painting color of the dark German gray was a great base, but I did have to go back and shade. And you can see that up close. If I bring these guys in, you know, this is a dry brush technique. Um, there are spots in here where some of the uh, wash has settled and I did that on purpose so we get some shading in here um, and then I highlighted up around the the detail parts like where the holes and at the the upper layers of the sails things were maybe salt had collected and dried or you know where you get more light from zenithal lighting so I'm assuming we have the moonlight coming down so it is a white light not a yellow light so that was the the painting then so <sighs> Um, yeah, I did have to cut the yards off. Um, I'll put a picture of the yard cut off the sail here. Right there. And I mean, that was really not that difficult. Um, and then it was just a matter of patiently putting the sails on the best way possible. So in this one, it was all shredded near where the yard was supposed to be. So I simply saved the threads, tied them off. In this one, the 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 yard where the the sail laid over the yard that actually led a nice little channel that i could just glue on um and glue them in place so you know there's there's a combination of those two now your instructions are full of gotchas okay so your instructions and i did comment about this earlier about how you put on the masts and i said work from aft forward and then where i told you this I said, jump to step 61 and work backward. Do that. Now, there are a couple other things I do want to call out. Um, these belay points, right? Um, there's somebody who is uh, much more um, accurate on the pearl itself and where these belay points are, especially these on the forecastle. They didn't exist on the forecastle. They were actually belay pins drilled through the railing here. Um, I didn't realize that. But I already had these on and I'm okay and I am content because there's enough vagarity in the, in the image that, that I will be content and I will not be upset by it. Um, however, there's some complicated knotting here that you, you should do if you want to get that look that's on these belay points. Um, I actually recommend doing that before you glue these on. So you will have, I actually had most of these threads probably close to, you know, almost a meter long for all of them, for all of the belay points. And what I did was I then took them, I had them glued in, right? And then I pulled all the threads together and then I used a toothpick and then I just rolled the thread and I basically let the, the, the layer of thread, right? just roll up on this. So I just essentially wrapped it around, but I did it by rolling and that kept it nice, flat and smooth. And then once I got it up close to where I wanted it, so like I'd roll this up to here for this one, I rolled it to there. And then all I did was I just took one of these little alligator clips and I clipped it. So that was hanging there. It looked like for a while there, this thing looked like, um, you know, a 1950s housewife with her hair up in, in rollers. Um, but if you do this, right? So if you do this before you glue these on, I still recommend gluing these on before you get into any of the, the rigging because you just can't get to those spots. 
But if you want to do all the complicated, the nice little pretty knotting and so forth to get these, these hanging ropes, do that before you glue them on. Then just keep your ropes neat. Now, I found that as I worked through the ropes, um, by keeping them sort of spread out and working from aft forward, I was able to work around them and I didn't really get them getting knotted or tangled um, simply because they, they weren't overlaying each other. And I, I made sure that as I worked on them, I wouldn't let them overlay. But so in essence, I worked. There we go. I worked back to front and I worked bottom up. Um, it is arguable that it might be useful to go top down, but I did find that I need to get into the, the pulleys here to tie this off. And it was much easier to do that without these ropes and these ropes there. And then when I go to, there are two ropes on this one that go up through pulleys and then tie on two. Um, and I think you can see it here. These here. That pulley there. Let me see if I get in the flight. And I think you can see it. Um, so, come here. There you go. This will work. This guy right here, this pulley. And there's a mirror on the other side where the rope ties in. And then this one here, this is another one that looks better, right? Where the rope comes up, it comes up from a belay point down to the bottom, up along the thing, comes through here into the, through the sail back through then wraps around ties it on and that's actually what holds your sail in place the glue points for the sails don't work i mean they will work maybe if you use the plastic sails but i doubt it they're really really flimsy and fiddly um so i wouldn't put any kind of faith in those uh so working back to front bottom up is something that i found is critical to, to how you do that. Um, accuracy guys, right? So some of this rigging, I'm following the instructions in the instruction book. So basically I am tying off the belay points as indicated here, and they're doing what they do there. Now, perhaps them, some of these are not as tight as they should. Perhaps they don't run to the correct location that a true ship would for various reasons. Um, but that was me following these instructions that are here. So if you are a nautical person and it matters to you, those things, before you start doing the sails, go as far as getting the, the shrouds and ratlines on, but before you start doing the sails, get the rigging document. And there, there is a rigging document for this, which follows the rigging that's here. Um, and understand where those go and this is this was actually the one that i used that called out all of the ones that were being used and these are tie points on railings right that that happened there and if you read russian it's easier to make out i had to translate a little bit but you know these tell you what you're doing uh or what what tie is what so you'll learn a bit about, you know, what rope is called what. Anyway, so those are two of the big gotchas I did want to let you guys know about. Now, this is, I don't know, three weeks, two weeks, two weeks worth of work. Um, working a few hours at a time. Now I ended up, I'd work like a couple hours and take a break. So like I'd work on this one and I wouldn't start this one until this, the glue that was there was set and all the glue for all of the, the tie downs were set. Um, the other thing I did was I did these and all of the tie ropes. I did not do these ropes here until these went up. And I did the same thing. So you'll see some ropes that come up through here, go through here, and then tie into here. And that's that's like the step one of, or, or the first part of doing a sale. So the first time you see the sale, right, one of the first things they have you do is these tie-offs. Then they have you go do these tie-offs that go up to the upper sail. So I'd thread it, let them hang. And then once I put the top sail on, then I would put those on. 
Now, and then the next thing they tell you to do is put these these ropes on, the ones that go forward. And I found that if I were, well, I, I thought about it and I looked at it. And if I were to do that before I tried to do these, those would get in my way terribly. So my recommendation, put all the sails on. Get all your sails on. Going back to front, top to bottom. Then, again, working, so working here back, here back, then here back. So basically going again back to front and tie on these these uh, pieces. Um, because otherwise you're going to have spaghetti in here and there are trying to thread up some of these these tie ropes that go to here um, when you're trying to work in around the shrouds and in around that you end up getting a like a thread overlaying one so then it pulls over and is is not in a straight line so it doesn't look right so that will save you some grief if you do all of the sails going in this direction and then in this direction then come back and do all of these again going in this direction and going in this direction um i did find that going top to bottom especially here and here uh going top to bottom really really makes a difference and made it easier for me my opinion my way of doing it you your mileage may vary it may be different for you the other gotcha i'm gonna call out right now are these goram bullet points or these these lanyards um the joints right here for the shrouds are freaking miserable. Um, they're these little tiny points that glue and they just snap off without a second thought. And while you are in fiddling around on these, especially these guys. So the, the, shru the, the lines that are actually the ones for the stays versus the ones that are on the shrouds, these guys break all the time. Now you can probably see the green stuff I have on this one. I've had to repair that one twice. Um, it broke once, I repaired it, it broke again, then I just hung it over the middle mast here. I just threw it over the top until I got totally done with the foremast. The last thing I did last night before I walked away from this was put that back on. Um, I had to re-thread it back down through the spaghetti, but then it wasn't in my way when I did the rest of it. And I mean, it's just bump, right? And as you're moving your hand in and out, go very slowly, be very, very patient. You know, it's very easy. You do this and then you, you're used to, you know, just moving your hand to go grab something. But then I found that I'd catch a rope I didn't see or whatever. Um, also when you're pulling, when you're, especially when you're threading through the, the pulleys, pull, watch to make sure it doesn't bind up on any of the other ropes or any of these little projections, the cannons that caught on the cannons all the time. Um, it's probably obvious for for you folks, especially you ship guys. Um, that's probably, this is probably, you know, shipbuilding 101, idiot. Of course you know that. Well, I didn't. Um, so hopefully for those folks who are building the Pearl, I don't know that, that you know, we're going to know that thing. So I'm giving that information. Um, anyway, if there was any way... If I were to go back and redo this, I would actually consider the extra effort of drilling out this dead eye and then this board and tying that to that. I mean, literally running using the, the number two cable and tying up underneath through to here for all of these stupid dead eyes, um, simply because it simply would be that much more resilient. I mean, it's, it's also more accurate, right? I mean, they they, they chain off. Um, but that's, that is the thing that, that um, I, annoyed me the most. Not annoyed, but, but I struggled with the most was not breaking those. Everything else on this model, every, doing all of this is, is an exercise in patience. Um, but that's all it is. It's an exercise in patience, an exercise in reading, looking ahead, understanding what's going to go where. You know, for if you build a model and you look at, you know, you're going to pre paint parts and say, well, you know, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to sub assembly that. If you think about these like you do sub assemblies on any other kit, you'll be just fine. 
because you'll see. And then you've also got to be willing to throw these out. Um, well, not throw these out, but just throw the order out and go back in and look at, well, I need Joe here, and then I need to jump back here, and then I need to jump forward again because that really is something you need to do. Um, like I said, the, the one thing I would do differently, and I think you can kind of see it there. I'm going to zoom in. Is I would do the belay points for those differently. Now I got that to work on those, and I'm glad um, because that one is right up there, right prime and proper and visible. The one back here is also actually. Let me come back here. Sorry, I forgot I zoomed in. The one back here behind the helm on the Houdini deck is also sort of visible, but not quite. There's a lot of shade that that blocks that space and a lot of blocking of light that'll do that up here any light coming to the front is going to highlight that so I, i'm sort of content i will go back and touch up with paint where um the wax sort of waxified and and is still kind of white so i'll go back and touch that up uh but that's those are the gotchas for the sales i again will say that the the kit sales are beautiful. They are gorgeous. They are fantastic. I just did not like... Well, they didn't would not give me the look I wanted, which was the Ghost Pearl. And, and I felt that this was worth it. Um, a big thing I found out about this is, is patience. Um, a lot of times when I build a model, I'm, I'm thinking about the end result. And my, my, my brain is, you know... What's the end result going to look like? What's the end result going to look like? And that's where my mind is. My mind is is on the end. It's on the 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 final creation. I'm not as focused on the specific detail of something that I'm doing. Uh, when I did the Serenity kit, when I did um, when I was building the the bridge, I was focused on the bridge. But then the rest of it was tying everything together for the finished product. This. Every sale, mounting every sale was his own unique adventure. And so this, again, you ship guys, that's probably nothing new to y'all. To me, it's it's huge. It's very different. Um, but being patient and taking the time, I mean, each sale, just making the sales was time. And then tying off, going through and doing all the pre pre-roping, right? So just doing this. You know, once the sale was done, putting these pieces on, you know, cutting off the pulleys, painting, make sure the pulleys were painted, you know, de detailing them back up, then cutting the ropes and putting the ropes on. That was an hour or more per sale. And it was just this, this exercise in just doing one thing at a time. And I'm really, I just lost track of time. <laughs> I mean, I literally did. It's, I, I don't even know how much time I did end up spending because I wasn't paying attention to the time I was spending. So much I was just existing in the moment. And that was really cool. So I've waffled on now. That last couple of minutes was, was pure waffle. Um, I've told you about the deep, I've told you about the gotchas. I told you about the tricks. I told you about the order that I went in. Um, what is next now will be to put those final stay sales on. Um, I need to figure out how I'm going to do the flag. That's that's something I need to figure out differently. Um, I don't want to use paper, and I don't know that um, tissue will will survive. So that that's up in the air right now. How I'm going to do that? Um, then it's details, right? So I'm going to go back, finish, put on the anchor, put on the doors for all of these, which is going to be fun. Um, I've mentioned this before. There's plenty of detail here on the front of those doors nothing on the back and because i'm going to do these with the doors up like they are in the first pearl i'm going to have to just go back and use some creative painting to get some depth and interest onto those so these are really the only parts that are left to glue on this i have the anchors are done i just need to put them on and they will go here i didn't want to put them on because they're little sticky out bits and i break things and then the crew um my crew my crew I have some crew. Do I have crew? I have crew. So I do have some crew members, right? Um, I'm painting up crew members slowly. 
And I do have some crew on. I have one guy up here in the up there in the rat lines. Um, so I will get crew out and about. So the crew, the doors, and then final detail painting. Um, my next video will be the base. Um, cause I'm doing a seascape base. That was some, that is something new and different for me. Um, so that will probably be what my next video is. And I am going to stop babbling on now. And hopefully that, you know, you folks who have paid <laughs> stuck in this long, I really appreciate your time. I hope this is entertaining. I hope this gives some of you who are looking at this kit, um, I hope this calls out some of those gotchas and that, that it helps you with your model when you work on this. And other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful and happy modeling.